Welcome to Crime With My Coffee. This podcast contains graphic descriptions and adult content. Mature audiences only, please. Hi, y'all, and welcome to Crime With My Coffee. I'm your fabulous hostess with the mostest, June. And I'm Suzanne. We're going to tell you some stories you've heard. Some you haven't. And some you'll wish you hadn't. All with a Texas twang. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Absolutely. And if you're here for the first time, go back and pick one and just listen to all of them. Yeah. All of them. Please do. Please and do. We do want to, you know, say that we hope everyone had a, a good Thanksgiving. Their travels were safe. And and now uh, the season is upon us. Is. Just it putting is. that out there. Before Ooh. we get into what we're drinking, um, last week we made an announcement at the end of the episode. I wanted to make it at the beginning this week. If you are a member of our Patreon uh, go make sure we have your current address, please. We have gift boxes going out to all of our Patreon members. If yes. you are not a Patreon member and you still want a gift box, um, go and sign up on Patreon. Every level member gets a gift box. Yes. You, yes. you have until December 5th to sign up. Make sure we have your address because right after that, the gift boxes are going out. If you want a mm -hmm. present from us under your tree... Make sure we have your address, please. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I, I, they're, they're, uh, uh, it's, they're so cute. It's, they're, it's amazing. So <laughs> what's in your mug this week? Well, in my mug, because I had to get out and about and take my dogs to the groomers because that's what I do instead of giving them a bath at home. Uh, I actually stopped by Starbucks because that's what I do when I take the dogs to the groomer to kill time. So I got a uh, white mocha, a hot white mocha. And so that's what I'm having in my Starbucks mug that, you know, is from Starbucks. And, you know, it's good. I like it. I like it a lot. But uh, what do you have in your mug? Funny story. My husband just bought me a Keurig so I can now get my own box of pods. Oh, my goodness. That's exciting. But since he bought me a Keurig, I didn't have any K-Cups. And so uh, I had to buy K-Cups, too. So I am actually drinking the Starbucks Veranda Blend. Oh, what? So we're both having Starbucks. That's yes. crazy. Awesome. Um, although I do have some different flavored k-cups coming from bones coffee company they're not here yet i just ordered them because i just got my keurig nice very yeah. nice so is, is it know. like a, just a rando box or or no it, they don't they it, don't do the rando box it's okay. i got a couple of different flavors oh okay Cute. but they're flavors i know i like so. all right i'm sure one of them's like chocolate mocha Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. One of them is Army of Dark Chocolate. Yeah, that's yes. <laughs> yes, that is true. One of them is. I won't lie. It's fine. All right. Well, I have got a case for us this week. Oh, sweet. Um, Hope you got your passport. Oh, yep. I'm ready. I'm ready for that. Because we're going to London, England. Oh, I do want to go to London, England. I do too. So I didn't do a geography lesson on London, England, okay, where this case takes place, but I did do a little bit of research on New Scotland Yard, which is a big part of this particular case. Okay. New, New Scotland Yard did all the investigation on this. Okay. So New Scotland Yard is the Metropolitan Police Force for the greater London area, minus a single square mile of London proper that is covered by the city of London police and the train and subways. If I'm reading it correctly, uh, those are the responsibility of the transport police. Okay. All right. But, but yeah, new Scotland yard. Anyway, so we're going to talk about Alice gross today. Mm -hmm. She was a 14 year old girl back in August of 2014. Okay. 
She was super close to her family. Her life pretty much revolved around her friends. She's 14. Of course, it revolves around her friends and family. Absolutely. I mean, that's all they know. That's all they know. Exactly. So she had a habit of walking pretty much every day and a certain like route that she would take. And August 28th of 2014 was no different. At about one o'clock in the afternoon, she told her parents she was going to go for her walk and she'd be back by six. They said, all right, cool. She laced up her shoes, tossed on her backpack, and off she goes. At one o'clock and she'll be back by six? Where are you walking? That's a lot of walking. She walked around like this river area and these, these, this wooded park area around this. Anyway, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a long trail. Uh, apparently it is. But she walked it every day. Also, to add to the fact, um, she did suffer from anorexia. So I'm sure that's part of why she super walked every day and super walked for a long time every day. Yes. Yes. Her At the age of 14, image. she weighed less than 90 pounds. Oh, wow. And her body image probably did not see that with anorexia. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, so she, off she goes. By seven o'clock, though, her parents had called the police to report her missing. Well, yeah, if she did this every day, said she'd be back by six and she didn't show up, uh, something ain't right. Absolutely. So flyers are going up everywhere. Police are out searching everywhere. This was described as the biggest search since the 7-7 bombings, which is what in, in the UK, it's what they call the terrorist bombings that occurred on July 7th of 2005. It killed 52 people and injured more than 770 others. That's all I'm going to say about it right here, because I'm pretty sure we're probably going to cover that in another episode. So I didn't want to go too much into detail on that. Just the gist of it. Um, They were using everything that they could to search for her. They're using dogs, helicopters, they hands on searches like they they ended up having. I want to say I read more than 600 police officials you know whether it be like crime scene techs or detectives or beat cops or you know someone who worked for the police department more than 600 of them out on the ground searching for her wow they you know her parents are making public pleas on television they're super worried about her like i said because she did suffer from anorexia and she had been dealing with a little bit of depression at this time mm-hmm. Police weren't sure because of this if she had maybe killed herself by jumping into the river along the path that she walked all the time or if someone had killed her. They they weren't even able to rule out the fact that maybe somebody had kidnapped her and she was being held somewhere against her will or if she had just simply run away. Right, right. They They had no idea. But the police did know that she texted her dad at about 4.30 or so that afternoon saying she was on her way back home. They also knew that at 4.26 on the day that she went missing, she was walking along the Grand Union Canal. They had found the CCTV footage there, but they couldn't pick her up on any other footage after that. Uh Uh-oh. So now they have more of a focal point to focus all this searching. Right. Last she was seen, this area. Right. Two days after she was reported missing, the detectives located her backpack along the river. In it, they found her shoes along with some of her other personal belongings, but they did not find her cell phone. Mm -hmm. So they really amped up their searches in the water because, you know, that's where her backpack was found. I mean, her backpack wasn't in the water, but it was like next to the water. So they're focusing more on the water at this point in their search. The the authorities were basically on their hands and knees, shoulder to shoulder in this water. It wasn't super very deep in the footage that I saw where they were searching, but they were so close together and they're basically searching with their hands because the water, even though the water is clear, as soon as you sneeze on top of this water, all the dirt from the bottom like comes up and visibility is basically nothing. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So they're basically searching it by touch. After about a week or so of Alice being missing, they were starting to think that she wasn't in the water anywhere, though, because 
At this point, after she'd been missing for a week, if she were in the water, the, the gases and such in her body would have built up and she would have floated up. Right. But they hadn't found her, so they're still holding out hope that she's out there alive somewhere. About a week and a half or so in to her disappearance, not only are the police pressuring themselves to find her, but they're getting a whole lot of pressure from the public because they didn't really have any leads in this case at all. Right. But like I said, everyone at this point is still pretty hopeful that she'll be found alive because she hadn't turned up in the water yet. They're about 10 days in at this point, and they had searched between 9 and 10 square miles of woodland. Wow. And about three and a half square miles of water. Wow. That's a lot of searching. That's a lot of searching. And and if they're like shoulder to shoulder this whole time, that's a lot of people. I mean, just really doing a lot of hands on visual. Absolutely. Right there. Wow. Wow. For sure. Now, the police did arrest a guy based on a tip that they received. He was arrested on suspicion of murder because there was some equipment in his car that could have been used to, to handle a body. They found a shovel. They found some rope. They found some, uh, some sacks. And he wasn't talking. Okay, but he was what like, was nope. his occupation? Because I didn't... don't know. It was this was just a short little blurb mentioned about him once. Okay. So okay, he wasn't talking though. They did end up letting him go. Said, you know, hey, we're pretty sure he didn't have anything to do with this, right? Um, but keep your tips coming in. Yes, they're also at this point running down all the sex offenders in the area, uh-huh. and they're still coming up bupkis. They got nothing. Two weeks into the investigation, they said, okay, let's start back over at the beginning. With everything we've learned in this, you know, amount of time, maybe we missed something or maybe we saw something. And now that we have a little bit more information, it'll fit better with it. And, you know, so let's start over at the beginning. Right, right. Well, they found out that shortly after Alice had gone missing, a 41-year-old man named Arnis Zalkins had also gone missing. Wow. So she went missing on August 28th. He was reported missing on September 4th after he went to work on September 3rd and never came back home. Uh-huh. But he did get so, to work, right? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. All I know is his girlfriend said he left for work the morning of September 3rd. He never came back. So here it is, September 4th, and I'm calling you and reporting him missing. Okay. Okay. So now the police are looking for two missing people. Wow. Now, they so were within w- the same area-ish. Ish. Yes. Ish. Okay. So they go back and they're re-watching the CCTV footage where Alice had last been spotted. And they noticed that if they watched it just 15 minutes longer, they could see Arnis riding through the exact same spot on his bicycle headed the same direction that Alice was. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So now they're thinking, did he do something to her or did he see something? Uh-huh. And then because he saw something, the bad guys waited for him, learned his routine, because maybe this was a regular route to and from work for him. Right. Maybe the bad guy watched his routine and then took care of Arnett. Uh-huh. Yes. So they're re-watching it, and they go to where he should be picked up on the next camera footage, and he showed up about 45 minutes or so later than they would have expected. Uh-huh. And they're like, huh, that's really weird. And then they noticed that he came back to the same place at like 930 that night. And he came back the next morning on his way to work. And he came back the next evening after work. Well, so that's maybe a routine, though, that's. Yeah. So know. maybe it's a routine. Yeah. Yeah. So they did some digging, both literally and figuratively. Uh huh. They went to his house to search around and see if they could find anything at all that would tie him to Alice. Right. They're digging up his yard. They're searching in his house. And they didn't find anything. They also did some of that fancy cop Googling that they've got. And they found out that Zalkins had immigrated to the UK in either 2005 or 2007. I saw both reported. But he had immigrated 
from Latvia, where he was from, after he was released from prison there. Oh, well. See, he was in prison in Latvia because he had been convicted convicted of murdering his wife back in 1996 or 97. Um, Oh, my goodness. Okay. But 97, 2005, even we'll go 2008. That's not very long to be convicted of murder and be. We'll get to that part in a minute. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, doing a little bit of math in my head and it just struck me yeah. as odd, but okay, I'm so got to hear. More. So it was, it was either 97 or 98 when he was convicted. Okay. He, he did end up confess, confessing to the police there in Latvia that he did murder his wife. He took them to where her body was. He said that she had told him she was a lesbian and she had started going out without him. And one night he didn't come home. So he was fed up and being the welder that he was, he made this metal pole and he made this eight inch knife and he waited for her. And when she got back the next day or maybe a couple of days after she got back, you know, kind of letting her get more comfortable or whatever. I'm not real sure. Um, he kind of lured her out into the woods, kind of close to their house. And there he used this pole and this knife to bludgeon her and stab her. And he buried her body in the shallow grave that he had already dug. Oh, shit. Yeah. He told the cops, though, that he'd been drinking vodka the whole time and when when all this was going on. So he was drunk and he didn't really. So it wasn't really him that did it. It was drunk him that did it. It's and yep. so, you know, he's using he's going to use that as his defense and the the. Uh, investigators or whatever the the head people came back and they said no he was totally in his right mind when he did this it was completely premeditated yes like i don't think so yes so he ended up being convicted of her murder but the the punishment in latvia for murder at least at this time i don't know if it's different now but at this time in the late 90s it would the the sentence would range from the minimum of five years to the maximum of 15 years. Wow. Okay. Okay. He ended up being, yeah, he ended up being sentenced to eight years, but he was released after serving about six years of that eight year sentence. And that's when he moved over to the UK and became a builder there. Uh Police in the UK were starting to think that maybe he had run back to Latvia after he had done something to Alice. Um, I mean, I, uh, all- it, because they did notice and, and they were like, you know, but why Alice? Why Alice? But they did notice that Alice was very similar in build and stature and looks like she had the same color hair and everything else like that as his late wife. OK, but, you know, you should have gotten past it because, A, you murdered her, you spent time in prison, and then you got out. So, wow. OK. Tell well, me the more. Police also, oh, I have more. Because the police also found out that back in 2009, shortly after he had immigrated to the UK and just five years before Alice went missing... Zalkins had been arrested on suspicion of sexually assaulting a 14-year-old girl in London. Uh, Ew. Creeper. Gross. But those charges were dropped, though, after either the girl refused to make a report or testify or something like that. I'm not real sure. There wasn't a whole lot on that because it was just a, he was arrested and then it was dismissed. Okay. So there wasn't a whole lot on that. Hmm. Okay. Four weeks after Alice was last seen, the authorities had an actress or hired an actress who was similar in size and looks to Alice, had her dress up in the same type of clothes Alice was wearing the day she went missing. Uh And they said, here, walk this exact same path at this exact same time that she was walking it. Hopefully someone will remember, you know, if they see something again maybe they will maybe it will trigger a memory for them to go hey i remember 
seeing the same thing, kind of like deja vu, but this was a little different. And that'll that'll have them call in tips and it'll be the lead we need and we'll be able to found, find out. Man, that's that's pretty smart. I wouldn't have thought about that. Oh, I wouldn't have thought about it, but that's pretty smart that they did. Absolutely. Um, her family is doing another plea on TV asking for anyone who might know anything at all, no matter how small, how inconsequential they think it may be. Come forward. Let the detectives know. On October 1st, police were again searching the water near where her backpack had been found. Uh huh. And they found a pile of logs all stacked up on top of each other, which they thought was kind of weird. So they start pulling these logs out of the water. They, they didn't. And it wasn't there the first time or they just. Well, they, they started it? searching closer to the bank okay. of the river. So kind of more into the bank of the river instead of just, you know, like kind of yay far away from it. OK. You know. Okay. Anyway. So they found these logs, and it might have been in a different part that they hadn't searched yet. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. But they found these logs, and they're like, that's weird, because they're, like, legit stacked on top of each other like a pyramid. Like, they didn't just fall in here like that. Yeah. So they pulled the logs out, and they found that the logs were holding down a bicycle tire, a, a wheel. Okay. And they're like, that's really weird. Yeah. And so they start pulling that out. And that was connected to some trash bags that had the body of Alice in them. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. So police believe that this is what Zalkins had been doing on his return trips to the area. Oh, and the wheel. So... The, the trash bags were tied to the wheel. Yes. The wheel was, like, pushed into the side of the bank. Okay. So that it can't float away or whatever. It was weighed down with bricks, and then the logs were stacked on top of that. Okay. Okay. This was the reason why her body had not surfaced. Before. Right. And he rode a bicycle. He did ride a bicycle. Yes. Okay. Her her cause of death ended up being determined as being due to mechanical asphyxiation, which is not your normal, you know, choked or strangled to death. Me mechanical asphyxiation is basically where the chest is restricted and it keeps the person from being able to breathe. Uh -huh. So it's it's more suffocation, but without having your mouth and nose and stuff covered up. Okay. Okay. They felt pretty sure that Zalkins had been either sitting on her chest or it was just his weight in general from sexually assaulting her. Since, like I said, she did only weigh, she was reported to have weighed 40 kilograms, which is 88 pounds. Wow. It wouldn't have taken much. No, no, she's tiny. Do we know how big he was? I do not. I think he was average size. Okay. 180 pounds, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe. All right. Yeah. Um, they did end up finding some DNA on her shoes and on a cigarette butt that was found super close by to like where her shoes and backpack and all that was. Uh -huh. Um, They were able to match that to Zalkins. Uh -huh. They also did end up finding her cell phone case. They kept calling it a cell phone case, but the pictures that I saw looked more like the backside of a an actual busted up cell phone. Okay. All right. So, you know, that could just be a vocabulary difference between here and across the pond. Yes, yes. You know, I'm, I'm assuming. I don't really know for sure. Uh, because when they first started talking about case, I was like, okay, but a case is a case. It's not, unless it's personalized, anyone can order this case I have on my phone. Right. But then they started showing pictures of it, and it was actually the back of her cell phone okay, with like a chunk missing out of it here and it's all busted up and, okay. and broken. Okay. So I'm thinking they mean her actual phone. Okay. Um, but they did end up finding her phone at his house no. under, <gasps> under the patio. Oh no. Why, why would, why would you take somebody's phone that you know that you, killed and just i just can't I, I just can't picture it i just can't fathom i don't know i don't know wow three three days later after alice's body was found they're still searching for not only zalkins but other possible evidence 
authorities did find a badly decomposed body in a heavily wooded and super secluded area hanging from a tree. Oh, no. They would later identify this body as belonging to Zalkins, and his death was officially ruled a suicide. They were pretty sure that he had killed himself a month before when he was reported missing. Uh Uh-huh. And they they were pretty sure that he was probably dead before he was ever even reported missing. Probably. Wow. Because he was like, ooh, yeah, I'm a bad guy. Yeah. Wow. They did end up holding an inquest, and it was determined that had Zalkins been found alive, they did have the evidence they needed not only to arrest him for the murder of Alice, but they felt pretty confident that they would have gotten a conviction on a murder charge against him, which would have put him in prison in the UK for life. Yep, there you go. There you go. Um, but yeah, like I said, they thought that he had killed himself because he knew they were going to catch him. And he just he really didn't want that. No. He wasn't about it. Exactly. Because he's like, yeah, I got off easy the first time. All he had to do six years this time. I'm not in the same place and I'll have to do life and I'm going to take the chicken shit way out. So there there was no obvious motive. It could have just been a crime of opportunity. It could have been she reminded him of the wife he had murdered years before. So then he laid in wait for her and or it, essentially killed his wife again in his head, maybe. Or it could have been he was a pervert. Because he, you know, attacked another 14-year-old girl. And then he's like, oh, now I attacked another 14-year-old girl. And she ended up dying. And yeah. Either either way, the police and the public consider this case closed. They did end up changing the background checks for for those people coming into the UK, Uh and they did improve upon them. They weren't sure how he had slipped by and gotten in the way he did without any kind of flagging going on in their system for this super violent crime that he had just gotten out of prison for. Right. But they've evidently made upgrades and such to their system, and that shouldn't happen again anymore. And it, you know, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And that's my case. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, so crazy. Yeah. So what I got for you this week, it was, it was insane. I watched a, a, I'll say a TV show, but I watched it on YouTube. Um, the new Scotland Yard detectives, I think was the name of it or something like that, that, that covered this case. I'm not 100% sure exactly what it was called. I will have it linked down below in the show notes, though. Okay. So, okay. It, it, it has the, the lead detective in that talking and, and several other people that were involved in the case. It has excerpts of her family's um, interviews and stuff and pleas for the TV. It, 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 was, it was a really good watch. Wow. Nice. Very nice. He got what he deserved. And I'm glad he did it to himself. I'm just saying. My heart is not broken for him at all. So, yeah. But that's that's what I got for you this week. Well, that's, that's, that's our case. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely it's crazy. Nothing, nothing major long. Kind of short and sweet. But, you know. There you go. There you go. Now y'all still have time to do all the Christmas shenanigans that you probably got going on like i do <laughs> yeah, i should probably start my christmas shenanigans yeah yeah i'm in the middle of my shenanigans right now. all i've done is put up my tree and that's only because i bought it before thanksgiving and right. i didn't want it just sitting in a box i put mine floor, up tree, so. my, my tree up too yeah but that's all i've done it's fine i'm just fine. working on my stuff here and there yeah so so, all right. Well, once again, we want to invite you to join our Patreon and get a present under your tree from us. Uh-huh. Uh, you've got one more week after this to get them in. You've got until December 5th to make sure we've got your address and all that. And yeah, I think that's all the announcements we have. Yes. Yes. 
Absolutely. And I guess until next time, guys, see you later. Okay, bye. Bye.